So you're probably wondering, what's with the t-shirt? This is not my brand. What's up with the racing sim in the back? What's up with you being your basement of all places? When you're gonna be talking about cars, shouldn't I be in my like garage or something like that? Well, I'm not. And I will take you to my garage later on in the video. Okay. But for right now, um, we're just gonna talk here in my humble abode, the dungeon is what I call it. And we're gonna talk about reckless hobby spending. So for me, my reckless hobby was car racing, auto racing, uh, whatever you want to call it. I thought that I could get into auto racing and just dominate. That was after, you know, I had made all this money working the two jobs. If you want, you can click on that video over there and see what happened when I quit those two jobs. But um, besides the point, yeah, I was making just a lot of money. So I thought, hey, let me get into racing. Racing is an expensive sport. It's a sport that I really love. It's something that I always wanted to do as a kid. Turning into an adult, I still love racing. That's what I thought I really wanted to do. And thought that if I could just buy a car, turn it into a race car, get my license, I could just be a race car driver. I could get sponsorships. I could make money. I could then quit my jobs. This could be my whole thing my whole life let me tell you that is not what happened total opposite of all of those dreams happened to me um not because i'm a bad race car driver or you can be the judge of that mainly because it's just financial failure i mean ah, ah, he said it he said it racing is super expensive I'm going to show you some clips, stuff that I made uh, when I first bought my car. Uh, I bought a C4 Corvette. We'll talk after that. <laughs> Cool, huh? A lot of montage, blazy blazy, right? So I bought a white C4. I then took it to a shop. Great shop, actually. Uh, I'm gonna provide the link to that shop in the description below. Whitson Fabrication, um, they are excellent at what they do. I took it there. They did lots of work to the Corvette, getting it to where it needs to be to actually race and not break down on the track. That cost me a crap ton of money. So much money, so I kind of don't even want to admit it on this video, but feel free to DM me if you want more information on like how much I spent to get the old 1987 C4 Corvette to be race ready spent the money I was like hey let's friggin do this so then I decide okay well now that we got the car got our novice license let's go ahead and up the ante a little bit and then I was like let me get my full license so I go and look up what do I need to do to get my full license on the SCCA website. I was like, this is super easy, I can do this. Find a school, and the school that I choose, which I will not put in the link below because I feel like I kind of got screwed, but that's neither here or there, is uh, Cousin Autosport. Great people there, some great drivers, people that I, I still look at their stuff, comment here and there because I, I like them as drivers, but as a school itself, not something I can recommend, but yeah, I go to the school and you know, I'm crushing it. Like my car is not crushing it because they say that it broke down and you know, I'll cut to a clip and you can watch that. But it did not break down. Actually what happened to the car was uh, there's a lot of condensation in the exhaust and condensation was built there because previous owner had wood inside the exhaust. I, I don't know why. Uh, maybe somebody could tell me why you would do that to a vehicle, but there's wood in the exhaust. So they took the catalytics out and then, you know, everything was fine afterwards in the vehicle. But besides the point at the school, I stopped using the C4 and then they gave me a loaner car. The first loaner car that they gave me was a old BMW E30. I didn't know how to drive this thing. I mean, I have a BMW and a stick but the E30 had like a short shifter, but it was like long and like awkward and everything was just weird. So I couldn't get it going. So I guess they thought that I was trash. It was raining during this um, session as well to get our, our license, all the other students. And I'm taking this E30. I'm like, all right, let's do this with this E30. There was no way to get the condensation off of, off of the window or, or dash or whatever. I know I'm saying that wrong. <laughs> 
but there's no way to get that off so i couldn't see so i'm driving this thing on uh at virginia international raceway and i cannot see and i'm like you guys need to give me a better car how am i supposed to get my license so they give me another car so then now i'm driving in a porsche cayman i think it's like a 2018 cayman german still so i'm, I'm loving that so you know i'm used to everything down there with the shifting and i start killing it in the rain with this cayman to a point where even the the teachers or coaches whatever you want to call them at the school say to me like whoa you really surprised us i'm like surprised you i'm like i don't know why they even needed to say that to me they didn't say that to any of the other drivers so maybe because i was the only black person there i was trying not to get to that part of the the story but um or even bring that up because it probably doesn't mean anything incredibly diverse community it just was weird to me that you would say you were surprised at how I was driving with a car that I've never driven before and was crushing it on the, the racetrack. But anyways, so I crushed it. There's some people who spun out and they said, hey, if you spin out, you're not gonna get your license. I didn't spin out. Wow. Again, I crushed it. I don't know how many times I have to say crush. Likely, when I edit this, it's going to say crush across the video. But yeah, so I finished this up. I'm all happy. I'm passing out business cards because I'm like, there's no way I'm not going to get my license after paying almost $4,000 to get my license. I go to this school because you need to, to go to an accredited school for SCCA to get your license. And they have this school, Cousin, which is right there. I'm crushing it. There's no reason why I should not get my license. A day later, they call me. They say, we're sorry. We would like you to come. That's what she said. <laughs> practice with us some more. But we don't think that you're ready for your license. I'm like, what? I didn't hit anybody. I drove fast. It wasn't like I was driving slow. I mean, I had a Cayman, so I couldn't go that fast. Come on. And I didn't spin out in the rain. Why don't I have my license? I paid four grand. And this is not on top of the crazy ton of money that I paid to just get my car up and running, which I couldn't even use. So it was just bad all around. I spent so much money trying to get into racing, fixing up the car, fabricating the car, paying for a license. I mean, I paid for everything from just that stuff and then getting the race suit, helmet, I mean, all the safety gear. I did lots of practicing on the sim. The sim is not super cheap either. I'm sure there's some people out there who do racing um, with their sim and, you know, having a seat like that is not super cheap. The wheel is not cheap. If you already have a PC, great. But like all of this was preparation, so maybe I could become a full-time racing driver and that did not happen to make matters worse actually i had to sell the car so the car had to go because i mean i can't just have it sitting there for a whole year i don't have the sort of income that i had before to even maintain uh trying to race becoming a professional race car driver is sort of just something that I pushed aside. I sold the car for a significant loss. I'm actually going to send this video to the guy that I sold the car to and just see what he has to say about it. Maybe in the comments or something, he can laugh at me. Whatever, be happy for getting the car for super, super cheap based off of all the stuff that I've done to it. But um, that's where we're at. The car is gone. I did, however, buy another car as well. And this kind of goes back to like the whole financial failure part of this video is like I spent so much money trying to achieve a goal didn't achieve it and then also my income changed so I couldn't maintain this sort of life that I wanted to live with cars and not only did I buy a race car but then I bought like a fun car too but I kept the fun car which is great so I can still like drive this car it's BMW 3 Series nothing super exciting but I can still take the car to work and take it out and go to cars and coffee and still you know I guess flaunt like I have something when I really don't guys I really don't have money like that anymore something to take away is it's great to have a hobby and even if your hobby is expensive great but everything in moderation i would have to say i mean like this is not financial advice but if you have an expensive hobby like that and i'm going to talk about other expensive hobbies that i had when i was making some money this was definitely the most expensive one but when you have something like this you really want to take your time building up into it you don't want to buy something that is totally trash one which is what the car was and then think that okay i'll just throw money at it and then maybe it will blossom into something great when kind of didn't but it did like it still needs some more stuff to it done for it to truly be a track car throwing money at a 
schools and stuff like that was a bad idea as well. I mean, four thousand dollars. Come to find out, I could have went to a driver's school here in Pennsylvania for four hundred dollars, and that is, you know, a tenth of the price. So do your research more. Don't just throw money away. Do things in moderation. Take things slow, and you will get to your dream. So for me, yes, racing the dream is over for now but one day I'll get back into it, but I'm just taking it slow. I'm not going, you know, super quick at it, which is what I really want to do. I mean, I love racing. I want to go quick, right? But I want to take things slow. And I think that that's the best advice that I can give. So um, yeah, peace. And this is where the rest of the money went to. I mean, thankfully I still have this vehicle um it's very fun to drive it's not super fast but you know it's something that i can still enjoy it's also a financial <laughs> stake because i already have a working truck outside so what is the point right i don't know